Uh, it was a particularly long day, day one. Um, we did some total of four uh, starts and four first start wins and two races got abandoned and then finally some good breeze came in from the southwest um, and we got two pretty reasonable races in. Uh, so yeah, overall we were quite consistent, not quite as high up as we'd like to have been but um, I think for the day it was a, a solid first day. We survived, well Joe promised us biscuits on the way in if we had the boring first day which we succeeded in. Uh, we didn't actually get the biscuits though, so, but yeah it was a... Uh, <sighs> It's just a hard day, you know, there's 40 boats on the start line, usually we're, we're all used to probably a little bit less, um, certainly in a lot of the classes, so it just feels congested. Um, and it just means lane, there's a massive priority on lanes and just getting clear, and if you can get clear then you can kind of just work your way to the front. We had to, uh, having not qualified automatically for Hiers, we had to uh, we had to qualify at the Princess Sophia Regatta, so there was a little bit of pressure on there just to get into that, into that gold fleet position that meant all, that we could come here. Uh, but we did, which was great, and uh, yeah, started off with a good day, so all happy. So we're used to it being, the biggest we have really is about 32 or 33 in qualification usually, but obviously then that's qualification, so it's a lower standard of fleet. What we've actually got here is 40, and that being the best 40 boats in the world. So uh, certainly we're noticing it, it's massively tight, and, uh, and yeah, loads of boats on the start line, really, really close. Um, yeah, so it's pretty full on. Uh, as James was saying, it's because it's 40 boats, uh, much larger fleet, so certainly in the lighter wind first race, we were looking to kind of get clear air, get away from the fleet, um, and make sure that we were, we were going quick, basically. That was our kind of strategy tactics in the first race. Um, and yes, yeah, kind of similar stuff in the, in the second two races, where it's almost best to play a little bit more conservative, um, and because <clears throat> there's quite a lot of losses and gains to be made on that, on that first beat. Um, so... Yeah, that's what we did and it seemed to work. It's, it's actually quite nice to just know from day one you're racing everyone. Um, you're kind of not always wondering what the other fleet's up to and how everyone's done. So it, from that perspective, it's really good. Uh, and I think just the quality of racing is, is a lot harder, uh, which is probably what we can see from the results being a little bit more up and down. I think it'll be a, a bit higher scoring than Palmer was for our fleet. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. And I think we'll just have to keep going until the very last race. So we've had a really busy winter. Um, really moving forward in certain areas and uh, Miami was kind of the first time we came back and, and saw where we were at and whether we felt like we were moving forward and we, we really did. It just feels like it's going to take some time for everything to really line up and uh, so hopefully from this regatta and moving forward we start to see everything lining up a bit better in terms of our communication, our speed etc and then uh, hopefully we'll be pushing for the top spot as opposed to sort of second and third.